meeting to order. Madam Clerk, can we take a roll? Madam Clerk, are you there? Hi. Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Morning, Commissioners Antor. Commissioner Antor. Commissioner Breeby. I'm here, Caledonia, Michigan, Kent County. Wilkowski. Present on Anishinaabe land known as Grand Rapids, Michigan, Kent County. Earl. I am present and I am currently located in the city of Granville. I'm sorry, Commissioner, your location again, please? City of Granville. Green. Here, Plainfield Township, Kent County, Michigan. Tennessee. Here and Grand Rapids. Jones. Here, Cannon Township, Kent County. Holman. I am here today for the better broadband internet. I'm at my office in Cascade Township. Grand. Here, Grand Rapids, Kent County. Cloud. Commissioner McLeod. Here, Kentwood, Michigan. Morgan. Commissioner Morgan. Commissioner Ponstein. Commissioner Ponstein. Commissioner Skaggs. Here, East Grand Rapids, Kent County, Michigan. Sparks. Present, Kent County, Kentwood, Michigan. Vice Chair Stack. Present, City of Walker, Kent County. Commissioners Teal. Here, Grand Rapids Township, Kent County, Michigan. Womack. Commissioner Womack. Commissioners Wooden. Here, also on initial land known as Grand Rapids, Michigan and Kent County. Chair Bolter. I am here and I do know that a couple other commissioners were on the executive committee that we didn't hear from, so yes, I'll circle uh, back. Hopefully, they they uh, they are um, here now. It looks like Commissioner Womack, and then also just want to welcome Commissioner Coleman to District Five today. Thanks so much, Chair. And, and Madam Chair, your location? Oh, I'm sorry, Cascade, Michigan, Kent County. And one more time, Commissioner Antor, Commissioner Morgan. Commissioner Ponstein. Here, uh, Granville, Michigan. I just want to let people know that, you know, for some reason, these notifications are getting kicked to my spam. So when they're in the spam, the link for me to join as a panelist isn't working. And that's happened the last couple of times now. So I don't know what the issue is. Thank you. And Commissioner Womack. I know Commissioner Womack is here because he's in the chat. Right. He's not muted, but we can't hear him. Maybe Natasha, can you um, give him a call? He might not be a panelist. Sure. Yes, mine actually put me into the webinar mode at, at first. In fact, I'm still having difficulty. My chat is just Yeah, Maybe and we technical difficulties. Yep. Um, but I will keep have him on chat, Madam Chair. Okay. Is you do you have him, Madam Chair? I see him in he is chatting with us that he is okay. here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> then Madam Chair, you have 17 members present, two absent. You have a quorum. Thank you. And Natasha, if there's any way we can resend uh, Clerk Lyons, the panelist, um, 
link, maybe she can try try that as well again. Uh, Commissioner Coleman, I'll call on you for our invocation. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this morning for the invocation, I'm going to depart from the traditional prayer to instead read a call to prayer. And what I'm going to read was a call to prayer in another troubled time in our country. It was a proclamation from President Abraham Lincoln in March of 1863. For the sake of time, I've selected a portion of the whole statement. And the context we're in today is certainly different. The lessons we learn may be different, but a call to prayer and humility is one that we all should heed. Quote, whereas it is the duty of nations as well as of men to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God, to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon, and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history, that those nations only are blessed whose God is the Lord. And in so much as we know that by his divine law, nations like individuals are subjected to punishment and chastisements in this world, may we not justly fear that the awful calamity of civil war, which now desolates the land, may be but a punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins to the needful end of our national reformation as a whole people. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. But we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our heart that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sin and pray for clemency and forgiveness. Now, therefore, I do by this my proclamation designate and set apart Thursday, the 30th day of April, 1863, as a day of national humiliation, fasting, and prayer. I do hereby request all people to abstain on that day from their ordinary secular pursuits and to unite at their several places of public worship and their respective homes in keeping the day holy to the Lord and devoted to the humble discharge of the religious duties proper to that solemn occasion. All, all this being done, in sincerity and truth, let us then rest humbly in the hope authorized by the divine teachings that the united cry of the nation will be heard on high and answered with blessings, no less than the pardon of our national sins and the restoration of our now divided and suffering country to its former happy condition of unity and peace. And that's the end of the quote. We may not have a specific day of prayer scheduled but even today, may we conduct the business of Kent County, humbled by the truth that we are not enough to solve the many problems and tensions of our day. We must turn to God. Thanks. And can we get the uh, flag up on the screen? Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. We're under the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the and Republic to the for which it stands, yeah. one nation under God. Yeah indivisible with liberty and justice for all. all right we are on to item five of our agenda special order of business and we've got doug small and mike gusweiler here with us today welcome gentlemen i'm not sure which one of you wants to kick it off i've got doug first on the agenda so take it away i'll go first mike always accuses me of taking up his time so i'll do my best to do that once again um, but uh, I want to thank you again for the opportunity. It's a certainly unusual times for us to be in front of you. Um, but I think you're going to see that while uh, 2020 was, was um, a very difficult, especially for our industry, that our efforts have, have continued very strong on your behalf and, and those of Kent County. Um, before I get started, I want to introduce, I do have staff um, in this meeting with us today. They're my executive team, Janet Korn who's my senior vice president, Angela Nelson, who is our vice president of multicultural business development, Dan Yachman, who is our vice president of finance and administration, 
Kim Young, who's vice president of information systems and has uh, kept us up and running smoothly for the last year. And Mary Maynier, who is our uh, vice president of sales and services. And then Abby is assisting me. Abby, Abby is assisting also with our, um, our presentation today. Um, also with us is uh, the chair of our board, Dr. Floyd Wilson, Jr. Um, you'll hear, hear from Floyd a little bit at the end of my presentation. So to get started, um, our mission's pretty simple. Um, we need to drive visitors to this destination and drive economic development um, for Kent County. And um, I think you'll see in the slides coming up uh, prior to 2020, we've been doing that in a very robust manner. From a staff standpoint, um, we currently have 20 full-time staff members, um, including a full-time member in Washington, DC, which is where about 90% of the national associations are headquartered. That's the reason for having Leslie in Washington, DC working on our behalf. Um, a year ago at this time, we had 33 staff positions. Um, we, did, um, we did have to permanently uh, let go of 13 um, staff members. Happy to say that they have found um, employment elsewhere and moving forward in their careers, and we miss them. Um, we also manage the airport visitor services operation where Angela oversees that for us. We have 15 part-time staff members at the airport. Pretty simple organization. Uh, we're a destination marketing organization. So obviously convention sales and services, mar uh, multicultural business development and marketing take up not just the bulk of our attention, but also our budget. Uh, about 92% of our budget are in these three areas, the other eight being in the administration area. Um, as we look at uh, Kent County and your lodging excise tax, yeah, you, look, you can look back to 2014 is what we're showing you here, where it was about 7.6 plus million in collection. As I mentioned earlier, um, I, I remember having a meeting when I moved here in 20, 2008 with having a meeting with Daryl DeLabia right off the bat, and Daryl saying, we're not where we should be, we've got to move this thing. And I promised him that um, with the continued support of Kent County and our hotel community that we would do just that. And I think this graph shows that we've kept our promise. Um, through 2019, we grew it from, the lodging excise tax grew from 7.6 to 11.3 million. Um, and honestly, in 2020, the first two months, we were anticipating another record year based on what we had on the books and how the first two months performed. But you'll see a major drop off in 2020. And then um, our projected, um, the projected room tax for 2021. The uh, budget sort of goes um, accordingly, um, grown that too. The only way this budget grows is by putting more people in hotel rooms. Uh, 90 plus percent of our funding comes as a direct result of hotel stays. So whether that be through the lodging excise tax, which you um, have been um, kind enough to, to share with us to do our work or the hotel assessment where we get 4% of the room revenue that comes through our Kent County hotels. That's the only way this budget grows. So by moving it from 6.74 in 2013 to a very robust $11.7 million budget in 2020, that shows that we are doing our job of filling hotel rooms, which in turn, um, grows our budget and allows us to do more work and spread spread our marketing and branding um, uh, strategies further. Um, like you saw on the last slide, um, our, 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 our year ended with about six and a half million dollars in revenues. Um, we just finished our audit. Uh, we stay here, it's unaudited, but uh, preliminary comments from our auditors say that our number is, is, per, is, is pretty much right on. Um, we are um, hoping for revenues to grow um, somewhat in 2021, which would take us to an $8.3 million budget by the end of 21. I will tell you though, that um, with um, the meeting business um, non-existent, which it has been through this pandemic, um, that's gonna be difficult. January um, came in um, not anywhere near what we had budgeted. Um, we were hoping by when we set the budget that we might have some meetings coming through. 
that did not happen. So um, we've got an uphill climb to get to that 8.3 million. Um, this slide, um, you're gonna hear from Mike, um, but we thought it was important to, uh, especially for those of you that might be new to understand that we, um, I, when Mike started his organization, um, it, it was ourselves and, and you, Kent County, that provide the funding to get his organization started and, and what a success that's been. And again, you'll hear from Mike, um, but we, <clears throat> we, had we had committed 150,000 for those first five years um, of the West Michigan Sports Commission while the county committed 250,000 for those five years. Um, so um, what happened after that was uh, in negotiation of a new contract with the county, Daryl asked that um, that we be the keepers of the lodging excise tax and we contract with Mike and his team at the West Michigan Sports Commission to provide them with a source of funding. And we've done that. Um, and it's allowed it to grow um, uh, much quicker um, by having that arrangement. And as you can see, once that was created in 2013, um, where it was a little over five, uh, 500,000 um, through 2019, nearly um, moving closer to a million dollars, in investment between you, ourselves, and our hotel community for the West Michigan Sports Commission. Um, we're going to go through some con uh, 2020 um, convention numbers just to show you the impact. Um, through 2019, this does not include January um, or parts of February of this year, we have lost 352 groups. Um, you can see the numbers there. Um, the big thing that stands out is because of our mission, while our mission is to fill hotel rooms, it's also to spread that wealth throughout the businesses in Kent County and West Michigan. And um, $142.5 million in direct spending has been lost due to these group cancellations. However, uh, Mary and her team have worked very, very hard um, to reschedule um, some of this business. So thus far, um, her team has been able to recoup 42 groups to be contracted for future years um, to sort of bite into that loss, if you will, um, a ways to go. Um, but this is good news that we are filling some holes um, and hopefully that'll help us as we go into 22, 23, 24. Um, I will tell you that um, I, I sit on the, um, the US Travel Association Board of Directors uh, and we get a lot of our data from them. Um, their, their economists indicate that we as an industry will not fully recover to pre-pandemic um, numbers or 2019 numbers until 2024. However, um, we're bullish. Um, we feel based on what we have in the books, including some of this rebook business that we can do so quicker here in Grand Rapids. So, um, you know, I'm hedging my bet, but I'm saying that by 2023, we can be back to where we were pre-pandemic. Uh, the next slide uh, is, talking about sales activity, I mentioned um, early on that we haven't quit. Um, Mary and, and others have, have ha attended 31 trade shows in person. Some of them have been in person. In some states, they are having trade shows. So we have attended, um, but most been virtually. Um, big productions too. Um, and, and I'll get into some of the ways that we use the CARES, CARES Act funds that, um, that you were so um, gracious in, in um, granting us, um, but we do, um, we do in-person uh, trade shows and fam familiarization tours or FAMs as we call them. You can see we've hosted 44 meeting executives in persons or on site visits in 2020. And we also um, participated or hosted 10 client events in person or virtual. So no stopping on behalf of our team, the convention center team and our hotel community. Uh, this gives you an idea of, of where we are in the future. Um, it, 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 you know, don't be dissuaded by the, the numbers of 24 and 25. That's just the way our business works. Those numbers will grow, quite honestly, daily as we book business into the future. But this is future group attendance through 2026, which gives us a total of about 161,000 people over those years. I hope when I speak to you next year at this time that, um, that we've nearly doubled that number. The 2021 events and trade shows, so staff moving forward, we are gonna participate in 29 trade shows virtual or in-person um, this year. We are gonna participate in 28 client events 
And we hope to host four familiarization trips into Grand Rapids and Kent County. Um, these numbers will grow as, um, and I think we're all hopeful, as things begin to loosen up, um, it becomes um, a lower risk for us to have folks in and us to go see them. Um, these numbers will grow. So this is just, again, a plan for the time being. Any questions on convention sales or would you like me to wait, Mandy, until the end? Um, I mean, we can wait till the end of your presentation. Okay. Got it. So I'll move into multicultural business development. Um, it's been a, a um, major part of what we are as an organization. Um, uh, Angela has done a great job of leading this area for us. The DEI space um, is being recognized. Um, we heard it again in a meeting yesterday that you know our organization is being recognized by others around the country as a leader in um, developing our community involvement in the visitor industry, um, our workforce development in trying to diversify workforce in our industry. Um, um, as well as increasing, ultimately increasing business opportunity um, that are, uh, for, for, um, for more visitors into our community. And Angela's done a great job. As you can see there, she's hosted partner meetings with 10 small minority owned businesses. She works in our community as well as throughout the state and trying to develop relationships. Um, she also has worked with over 40 meeting planners to help generate new sales leads and accounts. Um, and uh, attended a couple shows. Um, and Angela's one of those that's been out in, per in person to some of these shows. Um, we focus on our DNI efforts. Um, we do a staff and board assessment of ourselves, basically measuring cultural competency within the organization and our board of directors. Uh, we did this several years ago. We came back and did it again um, recently to see if we're moving the needle, and we are. We're moving the needle upwards. In fact, Scott Welch tells us we're above that average um, when it comes to organizations throughout the nation in this area. Um, Angela has participated in several DI panels. Um, I'm proud to say on Angela's behalf that she also has been named to the Destinations International DEI um, Committee, uh, which is working on advancing um, um, equity um, and inclusion efforts throughout the travel industry. And then um, also want to let you know that we've been recognized um, by a couple organizations, um, uh, including uh, Senator, or, uh, um, Commissioner, called you, almost called you Senator today, Commissioner Bokowski and the Disability Advocates of Kent County. We're very proud to receive that award, um, especially considering past recipients and then Court Magazine recognized us for our DEI efforts also. Um, workforce development. I never thought in my career that a destination marketing organization would or should get involved in workforce development. But if, even prior to the pandemic, um, the growth that was happening in our community required us to try to help our partners um, engage more people to work in their facilities. Hotels were growing leaps and bounds. Restaurants were growing, but there weren't enough in the workforce. Well, if we're gonna do that, then why not develop a diversified workforce? Um, so one of the things we're very proud of, I think I mentioned it to you last year, was our collaboration with Grand Valley State and the Grand Rapids Public Schools to create the first Academy of Hospitality and Tourism at Ottawa Hills High School. Um, our hope is in 2021 to expand that um, to um, another high school um, and um, I'm, uh, be open with you. I, I would love to see this at East Kentwood High School. There has been some preliminary talk of that. Um, there are over 70 languages represented at K East Kentwood High School. It seems to be a natural for us to develop talent um, at the high school level um, uh, because of, of that demographic. So very proud of this. We continue to work with an advisory um, board uh, to make certain that the curriculum and the opportunities for these young minds are available to them as they graduate from high school or move on to higher education. Um, let's move into marketing. Uh, the Dream, Dream Grand and Go campaign um, is alive and well. Um, the buzzword around in 2020 seemed to be pivot and um, 
trust me, we pivoted a lot um, throughout the year as um, as things opened and then closed and then opened back up again. You got to be careful on how hard you push to get visitors in um, because you want to make certain that you're providing a low risk environment for them to safely visit our community. So it's been it's been a little bit of a task. Some things gone on this year. Um, the Experience GR website is being completely um, rebuilt. Um, we're preparing uh, the, the site will upgrade our ability to attract new visitors by improving the navigation and the web user experience. It'll also improve accessibility. And we're gonna focus on impactful photography of the destination. Um, and our hopes is, is that by mid-summer, this website is up and running. Um, the Pure Michigan campaign, um, a lot of that depends on funding that comes from our uh, state, um, but um, we are, again, partnering with them. We have a campaign that's focus focusing more on nearby, so Chicago, Michigan, Indiana, and the Ohio markets. We'll have a TV campaign that's going to run for 12 weeks from March through June, and then there's a digital ad component um, that we will continue to work through Pure Michigan, which has helped us in the past be uh, really successful in driving our leisure activity and making our numbers grow. Um, always on the digital campaign means the ad buy is ongoing every day, um, every week throughout the year. Ad exposure is continually designed to align with the greatest exposure engagement. Um, so this allows us to display on websites and social media channels uh, throughout. Convention sales, um, I mentioned earlier, we are very thankful uh, that we were awarded a grant through the CARES Act um, funds that you received and distributed. Um, staff worked very hard from August through the end of the year to make certain that we were spending those to increase business opportunity for our partners, many of who are small businesses. I won't go through this, but you can see here um, that uh, we're very energetic in using those funds. Um, and, um, and, and there's spillover to that. Uh, we continue to build on these campaigns um, uh, that you see there on the screen in front of you. Um, in the marketing side of things, you can see uh, travel updates. Um, we, we purchased a bunch of new photography so that we could showcase our safe travel um, uh, practices that we have here. Uh, website traffic was restored to 80% of our pre-COVID traffic. Um, very proud that we worked um, very, very hard for our dining community. Um, as you know, talk about pivoting, they've been open, they've been closed, but they've always, um, most of them reinvented themselves as takeout, um, uh, in a takeout way. And um, this number of 195,000, I would venture to guess is about 200,000 now web visits just to our outdoor dining webpage. Um, the Nomadist Travel Tribe um, is a <clears throat> multicultural group, uh, mostly African-American um, uh, travelers that travel around the world. Angela has been involved with that group. Um, our hopes is, is with our sponsorship um, um, with them that we can entice more of those visitors to our community in the future. We continue with our promotions. Restaurant Week was in August. Our craft beverage pass, our cultural pass, and then we develop postcards for friends and family who are the number one visitors, by the way, leisure visitors to Kent County. Uh, as I wind down here, I just want uh, to note the, the link that's up here, our, our website. Um, we encourage you to sign up and receive our newsletters uh, on a regular basis that'll keep you up to date so you don't have to wait for us to do this on an annual basis. Uh, so please do so. And lastly, I would just like uh, to introduce um, the chair of our board, Dr. Floyd Wilson Jr. and let him close. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Doug. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, good, good. Yeah, so um, just a couple of things. Number one, I am proud and honored to be a part of this team. I think as Doug mentioned, um, there's a lot going on. And one of the words that he talked about was pivot. And, and I like that because it sort of exemplifies what you need to do in times like we are in today, um, be it the pandemic or any calamity that continues to um, be part of our community. 
Um, Doug and team, there's a robustness that his staff um, come to work with every single day. Um, the vibrancy and the health of this community is number one on their radar. And, you know, some of the areas that he talked about as it relates to sales, multicultural, um, business development and workforce development, not are always traditional um, lines of business, but are also very necessary. And what we like and what we appreciate Kent County commissioners and, and, and team is that the partnership that we have with you all is so important. Um, Doug has shared with me and the team as well, their commitment to making sure we do all we can to continue to bring people into this community. And we just wanna let you all know, we're, we're grateful for our relationship with you. Um, we're gonna do our part and um, look forward to having these type of um, presentations in the future. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Great, with that, do we have questions for Doug? Let me look. Any hands raised? Looks like Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Chair Bolter. Thank you for that great presentation and summary, Doug. I am honored to be on the board for Experience Grand Rapids as appointment by being a commissioner. The hard work you and your group does just needs to be additionally highlighted. What a critical partner you are for us. Over the years, we've had a great big fabulous spotlight of success as you summarized and the pandemic has hit every single area of everyone's life at some point in some very tough ways. So to foreshadow how important this partnership is when things aren't as robust as we prefer, the finance committee, because of our agreement with the CAA, will be seeing an agenda item to add some support because the lodging and excise tax, uh, it fell short for what we need for the payment bonds. So I am honored to be a part of this and to continue to watch the development and the outcome from a pandemic. It is no light lift. And you and your team are all in there and all in and really building some serious muscle. So thank you for your continued work. And I, I will, I'm right there with you to do what I can. So keep, keep it up. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Bolkowski. Um, thank you, Chair. First two quick edits. Um, I'm not running for Senate anytime soon, nor in this lifetime. Second, um, at the very beginning, uh, Doug, you said we were kind to uh, invest in experience Grand Rapids. Um, I would change that adjective that it might sound egotistical, but we are smart to invest because again, the return that you just showed um, is what we need to be doing um, with these revenues. Um, and then especially the way you've been leading um, with the investment in the diversity and equity space. Um, again, getting national recognition for that. Um, we are smart to invest in smart people like you. Um, all that being said, um, my question is, um, with now, that, I mean, COVID has taught us, we knew it before COVID, that, that a lot of people, especially people with discretionary um, income, um, could work from anywhere. And so is there any research done on the impact of your destination marketing on people's choice where they live um, and work from? Um, well, if you re relate, if you're um, equating it to the visitor, um, yes, there continues to be a lot of studies done on that. I tell you, we, we actually see some opportunity on the meeting side. And here, here's what I mean by that is that people feel that with meetings going hybrid, that there's going to be less attendance at meetings. Um, that may be true and probably will be, especially in the short term. But there's a lot of large groups that we're meeting in large cities. Um, Mid-sized cities have a greater opportunity pre, uh, uh, post-COVID, in my opinion, and those of many in our industry, 
to develop new business opportunity because folks are either hesitant to go to the larger populated cities, um, or if the groups are only two thirds or even half of what they were in person before, now they can go to a Grand Rapids, which can now fit them in less costly to meet. So we are working to find out who those groups are to try to let, quite honestly, take advantage of the situation to develop new business opportunity on the meeting and group side. Um, so uh, I, I think, again, not trying to be all blue sky, but I think there's opportunity there for those groups that are shrinking to be made up with by those groups that are not going to go to the larger cities that can fit now into a Grand Rapids. Not sure if that answers part of your question or your question. It's all good. Thank you much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other hands raised, so we can move on to Mike. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Chair Bolter, Administrator Britt, uh, Commissioners. Let me get my screen share up. and bring up the presentation. Hopefully this works. Can you see that, uh, Chair Bolter? Yes. Okay, great. Now I need to actually maneuver to... a menu bar in my way to start my slideshow. If you go to the far left on from beginning, you should be able to get it there. Oh, thank you. Gosh, smarter people on here than myself. Um, well, thank you very much. You know, we always appreciate the opportunity to, to present to the Kent County Board of Commissioners. I wanna welcome the new commissioners. Um, certainly this gives us an opportunity to, if you're not familiar with the West Michigan Sports Commission, um, you know, tell you a little bit about our work and, and what we do, uh, but certainly want to thank uh, the Kent County Commission, uh, your efforts to, to create us. Um, my, my colleague, Doug, uh, you know, indicated uh, that, that we were born out of an effort uh, to have an impact on the lodging and, and excise tax uh, through the county and through Experience Grand Rapids, but also the private sector. Uh, it led by the late Peter Secchia and, and other um, corporate and philanthropic uh, donors. Um, uh, Administrator Britt served on our inaugural uh, board of directors and, and remained in that capacity for seven years and really helped see through uh, much of our growth that I'll talk about today. You know, uh, we're not too different in terms of, uh, you know, my partner in tourism and, and Experience Grand Rapids and the work they do, our concentration certainly is, is through sports and sports tourism. And we wanna enhance uh, our community through sports, and, but be an economic engine and certainly contribute to uh, the lodging tax and, and the hotel assessment. But it goes far beyond that. As all of you are familiar and, and what sports can contribute to a community, uh, it certainly hits on the health and wellness of a community, uh, but also our quality of life and, and our vibrancy. And, and really lifts our brand. So, you know, those are the things that, that we've lived on and grown with over uh, the course of now into our 14th year. We're governed uh, as a 501c3 nonprofit by a uh, 15 member board of directors. Uh, they come from uh, many different cuts of the cloth of, of our community, uh, both in the corporate sector, the sports sector, as well as government. And I'm you know, pleased to have a uh, couple of your fellow commissioners on our board, uh, Commissioner Brevey and Commissioner Jones, thank you for your service and helping us uh, maneuver and, and grow in what we do uh, as an economic engine. Our staff has grown over the course of, uh, again, 14 years. Uh, we've got seven full-time staff members, three uh, are contracted agents, and then over 30 different uh, seasonal staff members uh, associated with our operations with the sports complex. We've grown into three distinct operations and I'm gonna to touch on each one of those and the impact that they're having and have had. Uh, certainly our core uh, West Michigan Sports Commission efforts to bid on, host and, and bring a multitude of different youth and amateur sport tournaments, uh, statewide, regional, national into our community and the many visitors that come with it. Uh, our Michigan Sports Alliance, a new nonprofit uh, under our organization that really focuses on the health and wellness 
uh, of citizens through sport, uh, but also holds our signature event of the Meyer State Games in Michigan. Uh, and then our sports complex uh, that you know, throughout our growth, uh, the county has always been on our side to help grow what we're doing and the impact that we're having. Uh, and this is no different, the sports complex, and I'll touch on uh, the impact that that has had uh, on our community through sports tourism. But really looking at uh, our work to really be a strategic organization and, and focus on that growth. And we're entering into the last year of, of a strategic plan and we'll, we'll be heading into uh, another uh, opportunity to, to focus on uh, further growth. But you know, the, the key components and, and directives of our current plan really is ensuring that financial stability. Um, uh, again, Doug hit on the importance uh, of our contract uh, with them and the work that we do to contribute to uh, putting heads in beds, as we call it. Um, but, you know, even beyond that, uh, Experience Grand Rapids, Doug and his team, uh, as you saw from his presentation, have done just an immense job of bringing our awareness uh, nationally uh, as a destination. And we rely on that as we go out and really focus on sports tourism. Um, business development couldn't be more important uh, coming out of uh, th this pandemic stage and, and trying to grow our book of business back. Uh, and, and we'll continue to focus on what are the right events to host and, and really looking at our infrastructure around that. Organizational alignment uh, with regard to our staff, that we have the right staff in the right positions, uh, but also our board governance, uh, that, that we've got the right people steering that ship and helping us uh, with our, our future direction. Our brand relevance and then facility development. And then I'll talk uh, about what we've done to, to really um, increase our impact through facility development, but our continued focus on that. Looking initially at our funding and our stability of funding and comparing 2019 to 2020, which almost isn't fair to do, but, but I think it's something we need to look at and the impact that, that COVID has had on on our efforts as well, um, you know, we've grown to nearly $2 million operation uh, in 2019. The bulk of that, as you can see, uh, is through the hotel assessment and lodging tax, uh, uh, the, the work to put uh, visitors into our hotels uh, and our contract with Experience Grand Rapids. It was almost half of, of our operations or operational uh, revenues to work from. Our two uh, other operating entities uh, in and the Michigan Sports Alliance, or namely the, the state games in Michigan uh, and the sports complex made up about a quarter uh, of sustainable operations. And, and their funding really comes through uh, athlete registrations, through sponsorship, uh, field rental, uh, other business uh, revenue centers uh, like our concessions and parking and such. And, and I'll get into that a little bit more, but, but 2020, we, we took about a 50% hit. Uh, you know, to be about a million dollar operation. Um, you can see the ratio of, of where we took that hit and, and it certainly makes sense. Uh, you know, it's, when you rely on hotel occupancy and that took a dive, uh, it certainly dented that. Um, our state games uh, wasn't, they weren't able to operate all of the events uh, and I'll touch and discuss that a little bit more. The bright spot really was the sports complex and I'll talk about, you know, how that occurred and. and uh, what we're able to do with that. But I think more importantly is, is what we're doing to grow out of this, uh, this challenge in our economy due to the global pandemic. Not to um, really focus on it that much more, but I think it's again, important to show uh, the, the growth trajectory that we were on since uh, we originated in 2007. Uh, the, the green dotted line really shows that in our budget and Doug touched on that as well, uh, the, that through our arrangement, we were able to really grow the resources that we had to work with. And that in turn uh, grew the number of events we were able to host, uh, which brought more visitor spending into our community. Of course, 2020, uh, the restrictions and, and the pandemic, uh, the bottom dropped out and we hadn't seen those uh, numbers and levels since 2011. But we're focused on, uh, on our past, uh, on what we're, will bring us out of this and, and grow uh, our economy uh, and assist the county to, to get back to, to where we were. 
Um, you know, looking at our past, it's uh, over 880 sporting events and tournaments uh, that have brought nearly 1.5 million athletes and, and their family members into our region, uh, spending over $400 million. Uh, so, so that's what we're really focused on and focused on, you know, looking into even the near future. Um, the one thing that we're finding with sports tourism is it's one of the segments of tourism uh, that's quick to rebound. Uh, you know, people are, are certainly uh, feeling a, a little claustrophobic uh, in, in being cooped up at home. Uh, we saw that in 2020. And, and again, I'll talk a little bit about the impact our sports complex realized. Uh, but we know that the, there's opportunities and there's opportunities to do it safely. Uh, to, to look at social distancing and, and yet still have an economic impact through some of these events. So our 2021 calendar is shaping up. Uh, we're working uh, to bring these events in and do it safely uh, through USA Hockey uh, events in, in late April into May, uh, collegiate bowling, uh, NCAA working with our partners in, at GBSU and our D2 Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Uh, and the list goes on and we'll continue to build that. Uh, but again, you know, with really focused on uh, directives from our local and, and state health departments and doing it safely. The Michigan Sports Alliance I mentioned is one of our operating entities uh, that, that has grown. It, it holds our signature event in the Meyer State Games in Michigan. Uh, think of it as an Olympics for your state. Uh, we started it in 2010 uh, with about 15 different events and 3,500 participants, and that's grown uh, over the course of, of more than 10 years. Uh, but also, you know, we, we had to, as Doug said, pivot uh, in 2020 when we knew that uh, we couldn't do a lot of in-person. Uh, and so our team uh, really focused on, on the vision of this Michigan Sports Alliance of being an influencer in the health and wellness space in doing it through sports. And so I'll touch on some of the initiatives that, that our team really took and ran with uh, during these challenging times. But really looking at our, our core operation in that entity of the state games, at its peak, uh, it, it grew with summer games and winter games and hit nearly every county of participation from ages four to 84 uh, in, in both you know men and women and uh, in you know, diverse economic and, and ethnic background of participation uh, for nearly uh, 11,000 participants between those two sports. And, and you know, really the economic impact that that brought uh, over the course of multiple weekends of, of bringing that, but, but also focus on that health and wellness. You know, we had stories from families and, and past uh, athletes uh, from their high school days, bringing their kids out to compete. And so it really brought families together and, and celebrated uh, health and wellness and activity through sport. And, and we'll continue to, to focus on these efforts and grow this uh, 2021 and beyond. But in the meantime, you know, we really wanted to uh, focus on health and wellness and look at ways to do that uh, and interact with our participants and grow that uh, that database, uh, but do it virtually. And so our team uh, focused on a, an initiative called Michigan Moves. Uh, we created some hydration challenges, some step challenges, a weight loss challenge, and it had great success. Uh, we, we plan to continue these, uh, whether it needs to be virtual or hopefully it can grow to be more in person. Uh, another initiative that will launch March 1st is a Michigan Lighthouse Tour, another virtual uh, walk, albeit over 2,000 mile uh, walk across our state and, and experiencing 28 of our magnificent lighthouses. Uh, so we're really excited about, uh, about that, about engaging uh, these different individuals that, again, the, the importance of the health and wellness, but beyond that, the, the mental wellness of uh, just being active and, and taking part in some of these activities. And then hopefully in the fall, we can launch the, the corporate challenge that, that we put effort toward uh, and really focused on bringing our corporate uh, games together and, and corporations to, to compete uh, in a friendly manner, but to also become active. The sports complex being the other uh, operation that, that really has had an impact 
uh, on our organization. Uh, we were able to uh, start a capital campaign, build and now own and operate uh, a sports complex, which is unique for a sports commission. Uh, it's eight uh, baseball, softball fields, but more than that, it, it, it launched a partnership uh, both with Kent County, but also Plainfield Township to bring other sport uh, infrastructure and in, in, uh, BMX and mountain bike trails and soccer fields and uh, archery uh, capability, both indoor and outdoor to this area. Um, but, but we focus on uh, really the, the baseball softball. Uh, it's going into its seventh year, uh, but because of uh, the lifting restrictions, the drop in cases that we saw in the summer of 2020 and mid-June, we were able to uh, take a, a CARES Act grant that, that we received through the county of $20,000, put signage, PPE, um, social distancing efforts in place, uh, as well as some player benches to, to create that social distancing uh, and open up the complex for, for play. Uh, we saw an equal number of participants in our travel tournaments uh, over the course of mid-June through uh, the beginning of October, equal to 2019 numbers. The difference was there was more local teams versus the out of town putting heads in beds, but, but at least we were able to engage and operate safely uh, in this activity. Um, we also looking into to 2021 um, with the, the bankruptcy of Art Van Furniture, which was our naming rights partner, um, to pursue a new naming rights partner. And we hope to, uh, to announce that this spring. Uh, we're working through an agreement with a, a local uh, partner and we're excited about that opportunity. We've got another partnership that began in 2020 with Aquinas College to be their home field for their spring and fall collegiate baseball uh, competitions. And we're excited for that partnership. We've got a full calendar as it, as it is right now on, on weekend tournaments. Uh, we're a seasonal operation. We get going in, in late April and we're able to, to continue on through early October. Uh, but we've also engaged weekday opportunities and weekday leagues. And so uh, the calendar is full right now uh, and all things staying safe and, and being what they are, we truly hope for this to be a successful season again as our seventh season. We've got a couple of USA softball national championships, um, but all collectively having an impact uh, on bringing visitors into our community to stay um, in our hotels, eat in our restaurants, uh, business that we know right now is, is uh, desperately needed for these, these organizations and operations. And it brings that visitor spending even beyond those entities, uh, estimated to be about $5 million annually. Uh, you know, talking about facility development and being kind of a, a leading influencer and, and leading the conversation, uh, our partners in Experience Grand Rapids have uh, kind of held the, the study of Grand Rapids destination assets and, and how to grow our assets. Uh, seven outcomes coming from that. Uh, We've been uh, charged with leading that enhancing amateur sports. Uh, and, and it's really looking at uh, where deficiencies might be in our community, much like uh, creating the, uh, the sports complex in baseball and softball. Uh, and so we're focused on some rectangle field opportunities. And uh, we've engaged uh, with, the, with the local municipalities that are interested uh, in, in bringing sports tourism directly to uh, to their communities within Kent County. So uh, we're gonna continue those conversations and, and hopefully see these opportunities grow as, as our economy grows and as we get out from this global pandemic so that we can bring uh, more visitors into our community. So with that, you know, I, I do wanna thank all of you uh, for, for your work. Uh, it certainly is, is challenging times. Um, you, you're doing important work uh, and certainly thank you for your support uh, that, that you give uh, to our effort uh, in really being an economic engine through sports tourism. Thank you, Mike. Do we have questions? I know Commissioner Morgan has a question. Well, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. S just some perspective. I, I think I'm the unofficial uh, resident historian here and wanna follow up with Senator Bolkowski's uh, comments on the investment, when we put this together, <clears throat> we were in the middle of a recession. And uh, to get a million dollars 
and to have the uh, the risk factor, the risk tolerance to invest was really something. Um, Wayman Britt uh, was the face of this sports commission when it first started. And uh, I got to tell you, when we went to negotiate and renegotiate with uh, Doug Small to get him on a percentage, there was some tough negotiations going on. So, I mean, I just want to emphasize that even in tough times, we can, you know, let's not be risk adverse. And uh, if I live too much in the past, I'm sure this, the good senator will uh, keep me in the, in the present. So uh, appreciate that. I appreciate all their work. And uh, it's really good to see that uh, you are part of something a long, long time ago that uh, really does good work in the community. So, hey, thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Commissioner Morgan. We really, really appreciate that you're our resident historian and are glad that you are, are still here to do that. Uh, I don't see any other hands raised. So thank you so much for your presentation and for joining us today. Uh, can't wait to see next year's presentation with maybe some actual shots of, of kids and people out doing the sports and, and um, enjoying what we have to offer here in Kent County. So thank you so much. Uh, both of you and uh, have a great rest of your week. Thank you. All right, we are on to six public comment related to agenda items only. I will look for participants. Natasha, can you check the email? Yes, there are no new messages in the email inbox. Great, I don't see any hands raised either. So we will move on to item seven, consent agenda. And I'll again call on Commissioner Coleman. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the consent agenda, which includes Resolution 8. All right. Moved by Commissioner Coleman. Support by Commissioner Legrand. Legrand, questions or comments on the consent agenda? I see no hands raised. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the motion to adopt the consent agenda, Commissioner Antor. Commissioners Breeby? Yes. Volkowski? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Green? Yes. Hennessy? Yes. Jones? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Legrand? Yes. McLeod? Yes. Morgan? Yes. And Commissioner Morgan, for the record, your location, please. Yeah, I'm up here in God's country, otherwise known as Cortland Township, Michigan. Thank you. Commissioners Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Sparks. Yes. Vice Chair Steck. Yes. Commissioners Teal. Yes. Womack. Yes. And Commissioner Womack, for the record, your location. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Kent County. Thank you. Commissioner Wooden. Yes. Chair Bolter. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 18 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. The consent agenda is adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We are on to resolutions today, item eight of our agenda. And I will call on Commissioner Womack for our first motion. Yes, I would like to move Resolution 8A of this date, 2521, Experience Grand Rapids Agreement. Moved by Commissioner Womack, support by Commissioner support support by Sparks. Jones. Sparks. Questions or comments on Resolution 9? I see no hands. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the motion to adopt Resolution 9, Commissioners Antor. Breeby. Yes. Bolkowski. Yes. Burl. Yes. Green. Yes. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Legrand. Yes. McLeod. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Sparks. Yes. Vice Chair Stuck. Yes.
Commissioners Teal. Yes. Womack. Yes. Wooden. Yes. Chair Bolter. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 18 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution Niner is adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We are on to 8B of our agenda, and I'll call on Commissioner Ponstein. Thank you, Chair Bolter. I move resolution 10 of today's date, uh, the appointment of Steve Bukema to the pension board. Moved by Commissioner Ponstein, support by Commissioner Stack support. Stack questions or comments on resolution 10. Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the motion to adopt resolution 10, Commissioners Antor. Reeby. Yes. Polkowski. Yes. Burrell. Yes. Green. Yes. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Legrand. Yes. McLeod. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Sparks. Yes. Vice Chair Steck. Yes. Commissioners Teal. Yes. Womack. Yes. Wooden. Yes. Chair Bolter. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 18 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 10 is adopted. Great. We are on to 8C of our agenda, and I'll call on Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move adoption of Resolution 11 of today's date. It is to accept funds uh, for the Youth Sexual Offender Treatment Program. Uh, it comes to us from the circuit court. Moved by Commissioner Wooden. Support by Commissioner Bolkowski. Bolkowski. Questions or comments on this resolution? I see no hands. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the motion to adopt Resolution 11, Commissioners Antor. Freebie. Yes. Volkowski. Yes. Yes. Burrell. Yes. Green. Yes. Tennessee. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Oops, sorry, I didn't unmute. Yes. Commissioners Legrand. Yes. McLeod. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Sparks. Yes. Vice Chair Stuck. Yes. Commissioners Teal. Yes. Womack. Yes. Wooden. Yes. Chair Bolter. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 18 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 11 is adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We are on to 8D and I'll call on Commissioner Breeby. Thank you, Chair Bolter. I move resolution 12 of today's date, Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs Medical Marijuana Operation Oversight Grant from the Health Department. Moved by Support Commissioner Jones. Breeby. Support by Commissioner Jones. Questions or comments on resolution 12? No hands. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the motion to adopt Resolution 12, Commissioners Antor. Reeby. Yes. Volkowski. Yes. Burrell. Yes. Green. Yes. Tennessee. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Legrand. Yes. McCloud. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Sparks. Yes. Vice Chair Steck. Yes. Commissioners Teal. Yes. Womack. Yes. Wooden. Yes. Chair Bolter. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 18 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 12 is adopted. Great. We are on to our last resolution, 
8E, and I will again call on Commissioner Breeby. Thanks, Chair Bolter. I move resolution 13 of today's date to accept funds from the Rachel Gray Foundation Best Friends Save the Mall grant from the Health Department. Support by Pondstein. Moved by Commissioner Breeby, support by Commissioner Pondstein. Questions or comments on this last resolution? I see none. This may be our new strategy. We'll have our special order of business talk for an hour and then we'll have no questions for resolutions. <laughs> um, all right, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the motion to adopt resolution 13, Commissioners Antor. Breeby. Yes. Volkowski. Yes. Burl. Yes. Green. Yes. Hennessy. Yes. Jones. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Legrand. Yes. McLeod. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Ponstein. Yes. Skaggs. Yes. Sparks. Yes. Vice Chair Steck. Yes. Commissioners Teal. Yes. Womack. Yes. Wooden. Yes. Chair Bolter. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 18 yeas, zero nays. The motion passes. Resolution 13 is adopted. Great. We are on to item nine of our agenda, public comment related to any general county matter. Natasha, I'm going to ask you to check the email. There are no new emails in the inbox still, and I'm also not seeing hands raised on our attendee list. I don't see any either. All right, let's move on to item 10, commissioner reports. Who has an official report today? No official reports. Commissioner Steck. Thank you, Chair Walter. Uh, just a couple of items. First, the uh, Rules Committee continues to uh, work through the process of reviewing our current standing uh, rules and uh, expect that uh, with the input from all of the commissioners on various issues and ideas that they've raised, that we'll get through that. Uh, we've met three times now. We have one more meeting scheduled. Anticipate that we'll hammer out the last of the language and get a, a final recommended set of rules to the board by our March meeting. Great, thank you. And 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 Commissioner Steck, can you remind us you, we we have to have that, those done by a certain deadline, correct? It is correct. I believe it requires us to have them done by April, but we anticipate we'll have them done by March. Right, Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a brief update: the um, Kent County Community Action uh, Board also met, um, and uh, it is our turn to uh, have a commissioner chair. Uh, as um, uh, we proceeded with a nose goes version of an election uh, and uh, Stan Steck lost that one. So now he is, uh, uh, Commissioner Steck is going to be chairing uh, KCCA for the coming year. Um, and, uh, but uh, in addition to that, um, uh, the uh, KCCA staff provided an update on COVID relief funds that have gone through KCCA as well as the um, uh, currently discussed funding that could be flowing through either KCCA or through our, our safety net services um, that are currently in the state uh, relief uh, proposal. And uh, in addition, we reviewed uh, KCCA's strategic plan, uh, did not fully adopt it, that will likely be adopted in April. Um, and uh, lastly, we did approve uh, CDBG limit, uh, changes to our CDBG limits allowing for greater uh, home renovations in a particular property, particularly when lead is involved. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other official reports today? Before we move on, Commissioner Breeby. Thank you, Chair Bolter. I am honored to have a report from the airport. We met yesterday and, um, you know, the numbers are still down for air travel, but um, Kent County, the size of the airport um, is definitely leading in its class. And so we look forward to increased numbers and spring break should really be um, a time where uh, ridership increases. So we're looking forward to that. And the airport did receive two awards recently. One is um, for excellence in financial reporting, and that was actually received for the 27th year in a row. So kudos to them. And then another um, 
honor they received was from MDOT and they're the airport of the year in the air carrier category. And so that's a big deal to be airport of the year for the state and um, you know, some big honors and there's just an awesome team at the airport. And I'm really grateful to be part of the board, but the um, leadership team is excellent. So thanks. Awesome. Uh, Commissioner Steck again. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'll uh, go ahead and do a couple of other reports. Uh, the asset board did meet as well uh, this week and uh, reviewed a number of things. One item of, uh, I think, exciting news is that the GoPro Talent uh, Fund has uh, been re-energized. And uh, here in West Michigan, we have over $13 million of grants granted to various employers to assist in, uh, in training employees. And uh, it's notable that that is three times as many grants as the next highest county and or agency in the state. So we are well above the game in our effort to, uh, to do that training. So uh, the other item that I would report is the LRE uh, has just um, uh, employed, sent out an offer and has been accepted for a new executive director, CEO. Mary Dumas will be joining us as our new CEO at the LRE, effective, I believe, on Monday of next week. Thank you. All right, great work. Commissioner Steck, we really appreciate you chairing all of these committees. <laughs> it is true public service. Uh, any other reports today? All right, let's move on to Commissioner Miscellaneous. Commissioner Legrand. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to uh, address some of what we were talking or what was discussed at the executive committee this morning in terms of the, uh, the amphitheater. And I know that uh, between the amphitheater and DeVos, we've all had some questions about the transparency of the CAA and whether we're uh, getting timely uh, information from them and, and, and where things are. But uh, I wanna tie that into the presentation to the Economic Club yesterday by Populous, uh, which was um, much more thorough than Eric DeLong had time to give us uh, this morning. And I, I think that anyone who is able, they said it was gonna be recorded. So hopefully uh, any commissioner who would like to see that presentation, um, it, was, it was really excellent. And it, it's in a way very well developed, but this, this, uh, the planning that was done by Populous is, uh, is a very broad plan and all of the exact uh, development is very much um, in the future. It, it's not detailed in that way. But uh, I guess I would like to quote Commissioner Morgan who said that we should not be risk averse. And it's, it's so fitting that we just heard from um, Experience Grand Rapids and we've talked about the importance of tourism and I Populous described this proposed market avenue corridor as a you know one in a hundred years opportunity and the single most exciting development in the country right now. So I really just want to put that aspect out in front of commissioners that uh, this is a real opportunity for the for the county to put a stamp on this and to support what will probably be an incredible economic opportunity. And uh, while we need to have our uh, lines of communication open and transparent with the CAA. Uh, I don't. I don't want us to miss what will be a great opportunity. So if you have an opportunity to see that, I don't know if Natasha uh, can maybe track down that link so that people could watch it. It's really interesting. These are uh, international planners uh, of great stature who have come up with this idea. Like I said, a lot of it is still general at this point, but the the amphitheater is what they consider kind of an underpinning of it. So uh, I just encourage people to look at it and and to think big about what's a, a tremendous opportunity. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Legrand. And I was just going to ask if um, maybe Natasha or Pam can get a hold of that and email that out to all of our board members. That would be great, uh, great suggestion. Um, and I, I, you're about the third person I've heard that it was just an awesome presentation. So we really need to, to get, a, get our hands on it. Uh, Commissioner Breeby. 
I did take my hand down, but I'll briefly um, mention we have a check meeting this afternoon. So that's at 12 o'clock and the login information should be on the calendar. Um, all are invited to attend. We have a couple of new members, including um, Commissioner Teal. So that starts at noon. Thanks. Great, Commissioner Ponstein and your furry intern. You're on mute. That's not my only problem. Uh, so the NACO annual legislative conference is gonna be virtual this year. Just wanted to update everyone. Uh, because I sit on the MAC board of directors, uh, I've been registered for that conference already through them. And the good thing for Kent County is once one person is registered from the county, the whole county is registered and that includes all of our staff and employees. So I'm gonna be passing on to Natasha later this afternoon, the link to get in there. And then once you register, sorry about the dog, uh, once you register with your county uh, email address, you'll be registered for that conference at no charge to the county. So look for that. Natasha should be uh, sending that uh, link uh, this afternoon sometime. Great, Commissioner Womack. Yes, I had a chance to attend a webinar by Grand Action for update on the Market Street Corridor. And there's just some wonderful information that came out. Some great things that are gonna happen downtown, including some new walkways and access to the riverbank and um, just some ideals on even some additional bridges. I'm not sure if they all come to fruition, but I just want to remind everybody countywide and all the developers that may be involved in that, that we definitely want to make sure we include some minority participation there because we have, I know every industry is hurting, but I've talked to some of the developers in construction and electrical workers and concrete layers in the African-American community and some in our, uh, both our black and brown communities and 2021 so far has been setting them back. So I hope that uh, we can have some extra voices on minority inclusion on these projects as they come. But uh, I wanna thank Grand Action also for that great update with Market Street Corridor. They chose some great people to help look at some uh, future designs for that. And it, it was just an immaculate presentation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other commissioner miscellaneous? Commissioner Hennessy. Thank you. Um, I also had occasion to um, listen to the program yesterday with the Economic Club. And um, there have been a lot of good things said about it today, and there's a lot of good to be said about it. Um, but looking more critically, I was listening and had um, one of the neighborhoods that's affected by the amphitheater possibly we don't know by the noise, I'm listening also. And they, the neighborhood, the John Ball area neighbors, to the best of my knowledge, has not been approached or consulted. So I just wanna, you know, everything looks good on the surface, but, I, and there was a great list of all the people who had been consulted. And as I quickly looked at the list as it was presented yesterday, the neighborhoods were not consulted. And I do think our Grand Rapids neighborhoods are really important um, listening to whatever their concerns are and alleviating those concerns, it's very, very um, vital to the success of the project and to the acceptance of the project. Um, I also would um, just sort of uh, ask if we have heard through the news that there's been um, an op opioid case um, settled and that there will be money going through the to the state of Grand Rapids, to the state of Grand Rapids, state of Michigan. And um, I'm just curious as to how that might affect us here in Kent County. Hopefully we can get Maybe that can email to us. Yeah. Uh, any other miscellaneous? Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Chair Bolter. I just wanted to thank everyone who helped with the finance work budget group. We had that boot camp. We had our finance boot camp between our last meeting and this meeting. We had uh, a number of our newer commissioners and some seasoned 
commissioners attend. I want to thank them for their time and again staff for putting together the extra effort to bring this together and start having people think about this, get questions answered. And if you have any follow up questions, please make sure you do go to Wayman with those. Thank you. Any other miscellaneous? I have a few items I want to rattle off real quick before we adjourn. Anyone else? I see no hands. All right, quickly, um, we had a very good executive committee meeting this morning. I guess, you know, I thought it was good. It was uh, full of content. A couple of things to just get on everyone's radar and we will be sending all of these slides and presentations that um, we reviewed earlier today to everyone on the board. Um, just wanna make sure Wayman takes note of that and we can kick that out to you. Uh, great update on lead and what we were actually able to do on lead during a pandemic when we were not able to go on homes and not able to get contractors. It was still just an incredible um, effort. And so I'm really excited about that and, and very, very proud of our health department. Um, we did discuss the Fallsburg Dam is going to need potentially some uh, attention and probably some funding to repair. So more on that to come, possibly a special order of business or a work session. Um, we also did discuss to uh, Commissioner Legrand and Hennessy's point, the CAA uh, and the amphitheater project. I did talk to Wayman earlier this year about potentially bringing Grand Action in for a presentation. Uh, maybe we can still get that uh, done and quickly uh, scheduled, but I do hope we can see that presentation uh, sent to us and um, review that. We are apparently going to have to vote to approve the amphitheater project. So again, we most likely will be doing a work session or uh, something to gather more information about what the county has, county's obligation is, what the scope of the project is uh, moving forward. And we just need to get that uh, I personally feel for board members to feel comfortable uh, supporting that. Uh, lastly, uh, well, not lastly, uh, administrative search committee is going well. This probably should have been in reports. However, uh, if you did get a survey, if you did get emails, please, please fill those out. Uh, we aren't getting a great response. I had several board members still not responding and uh, we are on a tight timeline. So please, if you could do that, I'd greatly appreciate that. Also, executive committee and staff, Lori Latham has been working for several months on an official statement on racism from our county. Uh, she has collected multiple um, input from multiple sources all throughout our, our community. Uh, she will be sending us something here to review. Uh, and she can also give us a quick breakdown, hopefully in the email of all the folks that kind of helped us uh, assemble that. And um, hopefully, my, my, my hope is that we, we do our statement, but then we include a link to all the things the county is doing um, to address, address not only racism, but uh, our DEI efforts and, and everything we're doing. So I'm hoping that that can get up soon, but you will all get a copy of that to review. And then uh, lastly, I, uh, I think this was actually a typo, but we will not be having the April board meeting, the first April 8th board meeting. So uh, many of our board members will be out of town. And, and that was a discussion we had had earlier um, and somehow it got sent out on the schedule. So that will be canceled for that board meeting as an FYI. With that, I'll call Commissioner Coleman for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to adjourn subject to the call of the chair to Thursday, March 11 at 8.30 a.m. Moved by Commissioner Coleman, support by? By Wooden. Commissioner Wooden, all in favor say aye. Aye, we are adjourned. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.